Hello, everybody. I am Tim McNiff, joined by handicapper extraordinaire Kevin Gorg, a.k.a. Gorgomatic. And since it is Thursday, here we are, also joined by Minnesota State Senator Carla Bingham, representative of District 54 and driving force behind the movement to bring legalized sports betting in the house. And welcome to It's Gorgomatic and a big LPSN. Welcome to you both. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, guys. Always fun to get the weekend started out with a football game tonight and Great conversation with you two fine individuals. Well, you are all dressed up with some place to go. California, here we come. Yeah, I've got a uh, a quick meeting in St. Paul, uh, practice with the Wild at 11, and then we're going to hop on the uh, the charter plane a little after 1, and I think we'll be in the air by 2. It's it's going to be you know great to get back on the road with the team, and it's going to be great to start the season. I think we're all excited to see what this, guy, what this team can do. The state of Thank hockey. You. Yeah, any chance we can still away, Carla, and go with them on this thing? Uh, I think we could make that. We could make that. <clears throat> How big a your new football fan? That does your sports interest uh, extend over into hockey? Yeah, I like hockey and baseball as well. Um, it was kind of difficult to watch baseball this this year with the Twins, um, and it's definitely not my forte. I mean, football is is my number one passion um, besides my husband, obviously. But um, I just absolutely love it, college and and pros. But um, yeah, hockey. It's it's fantastic. It is. We're all excited about the season ahead. Uh, yeah. Carla, I'd like to talk to you about an article in the Star mm-hmm. Tribune this past week. Um, so our relationship with you started as a result of your work to bring legalized sports betting to Minnesota. This past week, the Star Tribune ran a piece by Michael Rand that featured Pat Garofalo, mm-hmm. your Republican counterpart in the Senate, stating that legalization in Minnesota is a matter of when, not if, according to key mm-hmm. stakeholders in the process. What was your impression uh, of Michael Rand's piece? Well, I it was spot on. And Pat does a tremendous job. He's been an advocate for this for years. We actually were in the house together as well. Uh, and he's just been pushing this for years. And he's so well-versed in it um, and did a great job. I, I think it just demonstrates um, the when uh, it'll happen. It's a, it's a matter of uh, how we're going to organically and through uh, grassroots advocacy going to get this passed. Um, I think the tribes see it, the uh, professional teams see it. Certainly the players see it because it's now in a lot of their collective bargaining agreements that they get the profits from it. So uh, I think it's going to happen. I think the article really um, shows the financial side of it. I mean, you started like in 2018 uh, nationwide, $4.5 billion after the court case came out, the Supreme Court case. Then you're at $13 billion and last year during COVID, we did $21 billion. And so um, I think that's across the nation, not yeah. Minnesota. But um, it's it's just important to show the desire to do it. And, um, you know, some people that are really good at this, you could maybe talk to some of the power trip guys. I mean, this is a career. Look at the uh, guy on Jeopardy. I mean, he right. was a professional sports better and millionaire. I mean, not only because of Jeopardy, but because he's um, phenomenal on, um, and I'm embarrassed that I'm drawing a name, a blank to his name. Um, but he's phenomenal. And he's just, uh, shows you that if you do this smart, it actually can be a career. Gaming is a career. I mean, you can be, have a very lucrative career doing that. So, I mean, might as well put some protections around it. And if, if we get the best case scenario, Carla, what would be, so let's say everything falls into place. We've got momentum already and I can't go, to any sports function now without hearing somebody want to talk about it. Uh, what would be the the earliest this could happen for Minnesota? Uh, sometime before May of next year. Uh, if we do it next session, we start uh, January 31st is the first day of session for us, and we have to end by the third Monday of May. And so it would be sometime between then and, I mean, during that, that timeline is when our session is. Um, I think it's an uphill battle in in the Senate, to be honest. I I think uh, as as soon as we can get some uh, commitments and parameters around what legislation would look like, I still have my doubts about the Senate. Um, We'll see again. My my good friend, Jeremy Miller, just took over as majority leader. um, And I have faith that he understands this the way I I understand it, the way Karen Housley understands it, the way... Uh, Matt Klein does. I mean, it's bipartisan. So let's hope uh, let's hope we can muster together the support between the two caucuses to get it through. But uh, there's some strong opposition in the Senate on both sides of the aisle. It's not that's not a partisan swipe. 
and we'll uh, get into that more as we go along. Uh, we appreciate the update on the situation. Uh, we got to make sure that KG stays on schedule today, so we're going to get to the business. You <laughs> yeah, don't of, want uh, the wild coming after us. No, no we don't want <laughs> that. I don't want him to miss his plane. I mean, I just I know the man has has been waiting for this for a long time and well deserved. Uh, so we're going to get to the business of NFL football and thinking Bigum. Yeah. And for that, where are we going this Thursday with thinking Bigum? Uh, well, uh, we're going to Philadelphia between the Eagles and the, in the, uh, box and I tell, yeah. in and tonight, and I, I think that, uh, it's going to be the goat show. That's what I think. Uh, Tom, Tom Brady, uh, is, is going to light it up. Uh, you know, he has, has even a hurt thumb and he still managed to pass, uh, for five touchdowns last week. Um, he doesn't have Gronk. Uh, he still manages to do it. Uh, he's just, I mean, you can't say, uh, really enough about his talent. And so um, I, I just think it's going to be a pretty dominant showing tonight for the Bucs um, there between them and then the NFC West. Well, some folks in the NFC West add the Cowboys in they're in the mix for the Super Bowl and for the long game. So, um, you know, he's, he just, he's got it all on, on this team. You know, he's got Leonard Fournette, uh, and, uh, you add Giovanni, um, Bernard in there and who can, can do a great receiving running back there. And then we had Mike Evans, who's his number one guy. Uh, Tom Brady is, you know, has, is the passing leader in the whole NFL. And so I think he just does a good job of spreading out and Tyler Johnson, go, go for Minnesota guy. Um, and the only concern I would have on the, um, uh, for that team is there's some little bit of injuries on the defense, but um, if you can contain Jalen hurt, what a story with Jalen hurt. Uh, just a, a raw talent there, you know, came in second Heisman trophy to none other than Joe Burrow and got a start come back uh, when two talk Navala uh, got hurt his uh, that would be his junior year. And then decides, Hey, I'm a starter and I'm not going to be two outs. I'm going to go to Oklahoma. Why two stays here at Alabama. And um, came in second his senior year to Joe Burrow for the Heisman. So it's he's just really good. A lot of pressure on him. You know, he does a lot of running. Uh, he's got Devonta Smith there. And, um, you know, their defense is the talk. Philadelphia's defense is the talk. You got Darius Slay and Fletcher Cox. And they're going to make uh, Tom Brady work for this. But he's going to get at least four TDs. That's what I think. It's a it's a big number and and uh, so the, the 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 play was the line yeah so this is a big big in play Brady plus three point five in the TD passes and it's a prop play yeah. and that was the line KG is I had it now I went and did this on my own Kevin Gorg without you uh, as I went and checked some other stuff. is this the number that you have well there's multiple numbers I mean the only number you need to do to make uh, a basic wager would be two and a half. So if you go over two and a half, I think you're still plus 110, but you can go over three and a half and she's going to get like plus 280 on this bet. So I love the play. If you think he's going to have four touchdown passes, um, play this because you, you put a hundred up to make 280, you get almost $400 back on your wager. So I love the aggressive nature to Carla's play. And we are thinking big here and that's big money. Yep. Yep. We're thinking big. Yes. All right, so so there you go. The expert weighs in. How do you feel about getting some feedback from Gorgomatic on your play? It's an honor. It's an honor. <laughs> he's uh, he's, uh, he's uh, <laughs> that's great. He's he's usually spot on, and and uh, so let's let's hope this plays out. But um, it's just the guy's got something to prove. Brady just wants to say that uh, I may be the old man in the league, but I still got some gas in the tank. I still got some zip on my arm. Uh, and I've got a damn good offensive line to protect me. Well, I, I love the the introduction you put of Giovanni Bernard because we haven't really talked about that, and there was some speculation as to whether he would or would not play last week, and did yep. and did impact the offense. Yep. And so KG, a lot of the talk about tonight's game has been focused on Philadelphia maybe a little bit better against the pass than they are against the run, and Fournette may be the play. But how does Bernard impact that? Well, it, he impacts Fournette's value on, on daily fantasy because when Bernard's out, Fournette's numbers really jump up in terms of uh, targets for receptions. And that's where all those points are in daily fantasy and if you're in a PPR season long league. So I think Bernard being a part of this offense hurts uh, Fournette and they still have Ronald Jones. So you've got a three-headed monster. And so you're really in a bad spot tonight because running backs struggle against Tampa Bay. We've documented this week in, week out on the show, 
you've got three guys to choose from from Tampa. And if you're playing daily fantasy, which we all are tonight, you've got to really pick and choose your battles here. I think the biggest value on the board in daily fantasy might be Zach Ertz, the forgotten tight end in Philadelphia with Dallas Godard out. Yep. Zach Ertz once again assumes the role as go-to guy. And I have a feeling that, you know, to Carla's point, if Brady's going to put up some big numbers, Philly's going to have to try to score with them and he might be their best red zone uh, option. So we've got uh, a line now this game, uh, Bucks giving seven at Philly. That's a lot with that crowd in that place. The over-under is 52 and a half. Uh, let's get Gorgomatic. Well, you know, you know, I, I think Tampa wins the game. I think Brady could have a big night, and we'll see that when we get to my prop plays. But I got to tell you, if you're going to give me seven points uh, in the Thursday night game in Philadelphia with that raucous crowd, I had to at least do some research. And I find out that the Buccaneers are 2-9 and nine straight up their last 11 games on a Thursday night, which obviously goes back before these guys have been together. But they had a couple of Thursday games last year. And now you look at Philly. They're 7-0 against the spread at home when they come off a straight-up underdog win. Well, they went on the road last week, got a win in Carolina, forced three interceptions. Again, something Carla mentioned, their pass defense. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're a team I think they can at least keep up, and, and I'm taking the seven. I think Tampa ends up winning the game, but I think it's going to be a good football game tonight, and I'll take the points. One thing we forgot to mention, too, is Antonio Brown is a recent addition um, to to Brady's arsenal. And I think, um, I mean, Gronk not being in there is is going to have an impact, too, maybe on the score. But I, I just think he, he's just such a good, does a good job of balancing everything out that it'll be a good game for sure. And I think you're right about and Brown is not just a. You know, beginning of the year, I wasn't sure. They already had Godwin. They already have Evans. You know, how is he going to fit? Is that like having a sixth toe? You know, but he really has uh, stepped up and, and is emerging again as the guy. I don't want to say quite KG that what we saw in Pittsburgh, but he's not far. He's not far off. He he looks like he's turned back the hands of time. And Tom Brady will have that effect on all receivers because, yeah. you know, Tom Brady, the one thing about him is if you run your routes and you do your job, he'll put the ball right in your hands. And this guy – is an elite receiver. He's still got the talent. And with Gronk out, uh, keep an eye on the red zone targets this guy gets. Two touchdowns last week. Could have had a third. Uh, he, he was targeted a lot inside the 20. So another guy in daily fantasy uh, at a little cheaper price than Mike Evans, you might want to take a look at when building your lineup tonight. This guy is still, he's still good. <laughs> and Darius Slay is one of the best in the business, right? But I mean, when you're trying, when you're trying to take care of Godwin, Evans, Brown, um, it's it's going to be hard. Yeah, so, does he I mean, does he just stand aside or does he shadow somebody? Because I've seen some people's plays where they're they're you know yeah, I've seen some people saying, out. "Hey, Evans, this 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 and this," and other people they don't even mention Evans because they are thinking of the Darius Slay angle. Yeah, right. And then I you got not, now Josh I have Gordon. Evans. <laughs> oh yeah, and he's the big tall guy that yeah. if they're inside the ten without Gronk and he gets one on one coverage at any point, Brady's going to find him. Correct. He did look at his tight ends a couple of times, even without Gronk last week, too. So that's another thing. Man, you, you did call for Ertz, too, because the tight ends have become so vital. Look what's happening in Dallas, you know, and, and Buffalo. Their, their tight ends are blowing up as well. This seems to be yeah. kind of the en vogue position these days. All right, you have some prop plays for us tonight. You like the Eagles getting the points at, at home. Um, I think that's solid uh, prop plays. And you already mentioned this. This isn't a, a statement about necessarily the, the back for the Eagles as much as it is about Tampa's defense, correct? Best rushing defense in the NFL, number one against top running backs in the league. And we have cashed on this a couple times already, going way, way back to week number one when we took uh, Zeke Elliott, who was a tremendous back and having a great year under the total and never had to sweat. Miles Sanders has not had a great year. I own him in a couple of my guillotine leagues, and it's been a struggle. And now you're going up against a, a defense that's not going to allow anybody in the yard. Right. So 36 and a half here. They're mixing in multiple backs. The Gainwell kids getting some looks. Uh, this one, I, I know it's a low number, uh, and we have to make sure he doesn't break off one good 20-yard run, but I'll take under on 36.5 for, for Miles Sanders tonight, Timmy. What do you think, Carla? I totally agree. So is uh, uh, I, I wouldn't want him coming after me at any point. <laughs> and so he's going to stop you. I mean, he's he's quick. He's been around a while and um, you know, kind of been a difficult player through the years, but, man. Guys, guy can play. Can play. <laughs> so, you got a couple of them inside yep, there. All right, inside, uh, number yeah, two, you you yep. get a piece of Tom Brady. 
Well, if he's going to have four touchdowns and we're going to hit it big here, we might as well have some yardage. And I, this yeah. number seems low to me. And if I think you have to handicap the game when doing these uh, these prop plays. And if, if I believe it's going to be a tight game, there's going to be points in the game and Brady's going to have to throw the ball. And if he's throwing the football and their running game is a little hit or miss, I, I don't know how he doesn't get close to 300 yards, if not over. And this number is 294 and a half. I'll take the over. Uh, you know, the only way we really have a, a, a tough time getting there is if Tampa gets some early points a defensive touchdown, a couple of running back scores, and all of a sudden now they're up 21-3 in the second quarter. Now Brady doesn't have to throw the ball. We don't want that scenario. I don't think it's going to be that way. I think it's going to be close throughout, and I'm trying to tell a story here, right? I'm trying to cash all my props, and that story will be a tight game, Brady going off, Miles Sanders getting shut down, and in the end, Tom Brady finding his favorite receiver, which we'll get to next in the uh, red zone. What do you think of the story, Carla? I, I agree. I think it'll be a fourth quarter um, kind of light show. I think he'll light it up uh, late in the late in the game. I think he's going to conserve his energy and be very conservative, and then um, it'll be close. And then I think in the fourth quarter is the, is where he's going to light it up, kind of what he does. I, I know we're sort of on a limited uh, time schedule here, but so I'm going to drift a little bit, so forgive me. The NFL to me has been so wildly entertaining this season. I mean, it's something that, you know, uh, of a certain age, you grew up when the, when the whole sport was becoming the big television phenomenon. It was great to be a Vikings fan in the 70s when they were good. And it was life was good, right? But I mean, these games, whether it's been the Sunday night game, the Thursday night game, the Monday night game, you know, the, it's just been entertaining. And they know it and they're adjusting their play schedule for it, uh, you know, and making sure that even in the playoffs, we're now going to have a Monday night game. I mean, they're seeing it. They're seeing the opportunities because of how entertaining uh, these players are. And there's parody, Tim. You know, I, I think people forget that this is what Roger Goodell's vision was years ago is he wants parody in this league. So you get more competitive football games. And even on paper tonight, Tampa's a much better team in Philadelphia, but these games, especially when they're standalone games, and all these players know that everybody else is watching. The entire league watches. Their buddies watch throughout the country. They rise up and gives an underdog a chance. And you're right. These games have been spectacular. I can't name one dud so far in, in a Sunday, Monday, or Thursday night edition of football. We even got a good game between Cincy and Jacksonville. That was a wildly entertaining game. It was. It was awesome. And um, before I forget that final prop that I, I teased earlier was, okay, I, I didn't know if you wrote no, it down. No, 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 no. Yep, yep. There we got to make Carla happy with her fantasy team. We got to get <laughs> yeah. Mike Evans in the end zone. And can you believe, Timmy, he's plus 125. With Gronk out, I, I get that Godwin and, you know, Antonio Brown, Brown and, I get all that. Johnson. But in the red zone, if, if you don't have Gronk, at some point you have to think Evans is going to get a couple looks down there. Yeah, so it's almost even money, you know. So looking for a touchdown out of uh, out of Evans, and and yeah, so I, I think that this is really. Uh, you look at Philadelphia; they're like the Vikings. They're two and three. You know, this is a team that's like we can't go two and four. You know, and this Thursday night, you know, so they're going to give it everything. But I'm with you guys. I like the Wizard to pull it, pull it out to find a way at the end. Tampa's just a very good team, and and the mismatch I think really is is um, that that. Philadelphia is going to be very one-dimensional in trying to move the football. Uh, and, and Tampa's seen that before, right? We saw it with New England a couple of weeks yep. ago. It would be the same sort of thing. Don't you guys kind of feel like it, it was a lot easier to cheer against Tom Brady when he was in New England? Because Boston <laughs> has all these championships, right? The Celtics yep. win, the Bruins win, the Red Sox win. And then there's Belichick and Brady, and they're like uh, kind of like Darth Vader on the sidelines over there. I, I find it completely different now that Tom Brady's in his 40s. He's playing for Bruce Arians. They're in Tampa. And you know the Buccaneers went through all those years when I was a young man forming my football mind in the 70s and 80s when they had those orange creamsicle jerseys and they couldn't beat anybody. And John, you know, Coach McKay making fun of his team. It's so much easier to cheer for Tom Brady now that he's out of New England and he's in Tampa. So I'm all in. I love these guys. Yeah, it's a it's an impressive team. It's an impressive team. Bruce Arians is impressive in general as a coach. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's just fun to watch. I mean, it really is entertaining. And um, I agree, even the the um, Chiefs last week uh, on, on Monday night, it was uh, or Sunday night. Um, I mean, you, you don't see like Pat Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes struggle like that. And then the next night you got Lamar Jackson. I, I mean, 
talk Amazing. about an entertaining game. I just sitting there screaming the whole time, you know, like, cause he's just phenomenal to watch. I mean, it's a lot of talent out there and a lot of good entertainment. Kyler Murray, Justin Herbert, Dak Prescott, yep. uh, Joe Burrow. You know, I mean, it's just like we have this, and this yep. explosion of all these quarterbacks now. We're living like the golden age. Of, yeah, the league's in a good place. And yeah. again, the league's driven by a couple things, right? I mean, it, it, the TV ratings speak for themselves, but football's always had that that one angle. You know, you can wager on football. You always could. You know, whether it's the office pool, fantasy football, number boards, and now with daily fantasy. And so when we, you know, to circle back to where this whole conversation started, if you don't think you can make an impact on everybody when you legalize this in Minnesota, look at the NFL's numbers here for decades. They've found their niche early. Now it's time for hockey and golf and basketball and baseball. I mean, imagine sitting, you know, the Twins are 20 games out of it in July, right? But imagine sitting on your Barca lounger and here comes Miguel Sano to the plate and I've got my device out. And I have yeah. an opinion. I got my buddies with me. We're watching the game. We're having some chips. Well, I think he's going to strike out. Well, I think he's going to hit a home run. Well, now you can actually wager on an individual at bat, and it's on the broadcast, on our station, on the bottom scroll, saying, hey, a strikeout is minus 125. A home run is 5-1. to one. This is where we're going. This is where yeah. all of this is going. And football figured it out a long time ago, and now they've got the talent there where the ratings are just skyrocketing. But it all comes back to people love having some say in the game, and whether it's fantasy or whether you've got money on the game, people love the National Football League, and that's where it all started years ago. I feel like we should have like a flag flying behind him and, and like patriotic <laughs> music and everything. Yeah. That was I have chills. <laughs> all right, Kevin Gorg, I promise you, I'd get you up by ten two, and it's a, it's fifty three now. So I I'm not going to be the one responsible for making you late to practice <laughs> or miss your flight. No, I did it to myself. I got fired up there. I apologize, <laughs> but I love these Thursdays. Yes. Uh, honestly, Senator, thank you for doing. It's so much fun. To, to have this open forum and to talk about um, where this is all headed, because I, I've been dreaming of this for a long, long time. And I think now we're closer than ever. And like we you are. mentioned, we've still got some hurdles to overcome, but I know we're going to get there. And we're going to go celebrate when it happens. I can't wait. <laughs> Timmy's going to buy us dinner at Manny's. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or maybe a sandwich at uh, Capriati's. <laughs> One or the other. One or the it's other. Just as good as Manny's. I'll take that. Yeah, and, and I feel bad too because I didn't expect KG to come all dressed up. I got my why is that a weightlifting thing on here, and I'm just like, uh, well, Thursday's arms was on. And back, I should have made know? more of an effort. So I, I can see your chest is kind of puffing joint. out. Yeah, it's arms and back day. You've been working out, Timmy. You look good. <laughs> Those steroids look fine on you. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Oh, thanks. It was great. Uh, join us weekdays at 930 when we break down the sports talkers of the day in a program we call Let's Play Every Day, then 11 a.m. It is Let's Play Super Draft, where we take you inside the next big thing in daily fantasy sports. That is going to do it for this episode of It's Gorgomatic. So for Kevin Gord, for State Senator Carla Bigham, I am Tim McNiff thanking you for your time, for making this a part of your day. And while none of this, folks, is automatic, even where the state senator is concerned, it's gorgomatic. That's right. <laughs>